Welcome to Applied Biology. In this video, I will be talking about Comet Assay, which is actually a gel electrophoresis method used to visualize and measure DNA strand breaks in individual cells. To perform Comet Assay, there will be several steps. In this video, I will be talking about these nine steps, which are really important. The first step is cell preparation and embedding. First, you need to mix the cell suspension in agarose at 50 degrees and then pipette the cell suspension on the pre-coated slides. You need to cover the slides with a cover slip and then place the slides on the ice tray for 5 minutes. So after 5 minutes you will remove the cover slip to place in the lysis solution because lysis, uh, placing your slides in the lysis solution is really important for the cell lysis. And then you need to keep your um, slides in the fridge at 4 degrees for 1 hour. Through cell lysis, the nucleoid bodies will be formed which contain the loops of DNA. And these loops of DNA are really important uh, to perform the gel electrophoresis. The next step is the DNA unwinding for which you need uh, electrophoresis chamber and the alkaline electrophoresis solution. Then you will perform the electrophoresis in which the loops of DNA containing a break lose their supercoiling and become free to extend towards the anode. So you will perform this electrophoresis for 20 minutes. The next step is neutralization which is really important to remove excess salts. First, you need to remove the slides from the electrophoresis chamber and neutralize with one molar solution of ammonium acetate for 30 minutes. The next step is the dehydration. You need to dehydrate your slides with cold ethanol and then you need to dry. The next step is the fluorescent staining. Before adding the fluorescent dye, you need to rehydrate the dry slides with 70% ethanol and distilled water two times and then air dry and then you need to apply the cyber green solution on the slides. You can also use ethidium bromide instead of cyber green but ethidium bromide is more toxic so using cyber green solution is better. And then cover your slides with a cover slip the next step is the comet image analysis to determine the extent of DNA damage. And um, the step uh, is you need to analyze your DNA breaks through fluorescence microscope and then the data analysis. The name comet is derived from the appearance of uh, this uh, damaged and undamaged DNA which resembles a comet. This, that's why this method is called comet image analysis. This is not actually an image of fluorescent microscope, but I'm just showing you to make it clear to you about the comet image analysis. There are uh, three parameters through which you can analyze the extent of DNA damage. The first one is the tail length which is the distance between the head and the last DNA fragment and the second one is the tail moment which is the amount of DNA migrated multiplied by the tail length and the third one is this olive tail moment which is the migrated DNA percentage multiplied by the distance between the head and center of gravity of the DNA in the tail. So through this image you can make a difference between damaged DNA and the undamaged DNA because the undamaged DNA doesn't travel, it cannot travel because it doesn't have the damaged or strain breaks so that's why it cannot travel in the electrophoresis chamber that's why this is undamaged while this has a tail. See this is a tail so that's why we can call that this is the damaged one because it because of the damage or strain break it travel through the anode 
towards the anode in the electrophoresis chamber so in your control samples usually you get the undamaged uh, DNA visuals like this and if you notice the damaged DNA like this that means that this DNA is damaged and you will analyze the comet assay through these three parameters by looking at the these visuals